I will be using ordinary dimensions to dimension these details. I'm coming from this end of the part, so if I go up under ordinate, now not ordinate set, but ordinate, it's looking for the view. I pick on this view and now it's looking to place the origin. Well, I have no place to put it because I don't have a point. So what I must do is stop this command and go back into my model for a second and talk about where it is. I could use a center point, but I wanted to mention from this end. Since it was modeled coming toward me, I need to add a work point at this end. That would become my origin. Going back to the drawing, I will pick on that first view. That's this view right here. And I'll then go down to the model and right click on it and say include work features. I want visible use a work point. So I say OK. And as you can see, that work point shows up right there. It's off the sheet, but that makes no difference. So now we'll go back to the ordinate command. We'll pick on the view again. Then we'll place the origin on that point. Now I'll go back. I'll zoom up on a little bit. I'll pick on this line, this line, this one, and the last one. Right click and say continue. Now I don't like my dimensioning so I'm going to change my style to in line and I want to go to a single decimal place and I place them. The first thing I noticed I've got accurate dimensions but this one did not attach and give me a gap. So what I'm going to do is get out of my ordinate command Pick on this one pick on this particular dimension and drag the endpoint out to the edge that gives me the gap I need then I'll just put a window around them all right click and say arrange dimensions and I can move them anywhere I want so there we have placed the order dimensions from the origin point Let's go through the process for the other detail. So first thing I'm going to do is pick ordinate. It's looking for the view. I pick inside the view and now looking to place the origin point. Well again I forgot to project the point in this view. So I escape out of that command, go into the uh, tree, expand that view and the model and right click and say include work features. I'll include visible work points and again there's my point right there. So now I can go back to ordinate, pick on the view, pick on the point, then come back and add my locations. I'm going to pick this line and the end point as a reference and continue. Again I don't like my dimensioning so I'm going to go to inline style, single, single point, and pick then right click and say OK. Now this one needs to be a reference because I'm going to put the full dimension in the other view so I simply click on it and make it a reference. Now if you'd like to rearrange it you can simply drag it out and dogleg it a little bit it's up to you. So now what do you do with the origin marks that are outside the drawing? Actually, one is on the drawing, so we want to get rid of it. So you right click on any of the dimensions in each one and hide the origin indicator. So I'll pick on both of them and hide the origin indicator. As you can see, they're both gone, but it left the points. I'm going to use these for a special purpose, but I'll get rid of them in just a few seconds. Now, sometimes people do not, do not want to use ordinary dimensions, they want to use uh, dimension shortened. So let's do that. If I pick on dimension, and I'm going to pick on single place, single decimal place, and I'm going to pick on this line and then go back to the point that relates to this view, which is this one, and pick on it. Before I place it, I'm going to right click and go to dimension type linear for shortened and you can get and if you move it back and forth that double arrow will come into focus. Let me go ahead and do another one for you. 
I'll pick on this line and the point. Right click, dimension type, linear for shortened. And you can stagger them. This may be a method you like over ordinate. I'm going to place two more. This one back to the point. Be sure you get the right point. Right click. Linear foreshortened and just place it. And then I'll do the last one. Having a hard time finding this. And I'll just place it right here. Now, the detail view, I'll go ahead and escape out of the command. And I'll just move the detail height for a second to show you that you can arrange these very quickly with a crossing, right click, arrange dimensions, and you can put them where you wish. You probably noticed I, in stopping my dimension, I lost my decimal precision from the first one. So it's very easy to change. Just right click, copy properties, and put a crossing window around the others. All done. So right click and say done. So you have now what to call linear for shortened dimensions in case you don't want to use ordinate. Notice they all match up. I want to use the other view to show you some ways of applying diameter dimensions to a detail. To do a diameter dimension, I need a center line. So to get a center line, it's easiest to simply right click on the view and set automatic center lines. Notice I've already picked in my template all the different states I want, and I don't have to push them over and over. So you can do this in your template. I simply have to say OK. Now let's go to the dimension, and we'll pick on this line and this center line down here. That's a radius, so right click, dimension type, linear diameter and place it. Now there's another type you can use also. Some people like it. I'll use the same dimension. Right click, dimension type, linear symmetric and place it. You can move it up and down to change the length of the line but I need to add a diameter symbol to it so I'll go back to text Hit the home key and pick diameter. This one does not come in with a diameter applied. Now once I'm out of the command, I can then drag it up to adjust the double arrow. Some people like this one better. Now, again, this was not dependent on the sun line. So you can right click on it and make it invisible if you don't want to show it. It does not affect the dimensions. If you ever need to get it back, you simply put yourself in the view, right click, show hidden annotations, pick on it, and then say done. It'll bring it back. But again, I do not want it, so I'm just going to make it invisible. By the way, that same feature applies to these points out here. If I go to the points after I finish with it, I can right click on it and make them invisible. Same thing here, make them invisible. It does not affect the dimensions coming off them. The last thing I want to mention is that these dimension types which use the points out here and the origins are not affected by sheet. So if I wanted to move this view to another sheet, it would take all that referencing with it. So let me just pick on this detail right here, which is the first one. Right click on it, excuse me, left click and drag it down to sheet number two. As you can see it's in sheet number two and it's all maintained its associativity to the origins and the uh, points. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.